All right, time for a LARP cast presentation here from LARPcraft.com. My name is Artenan Alos, and we are here to talk about starting a group. If you're new to LARP, whether no matter what kind of game system you use or what you want to do, lots of players want to get together and interact with each other, both in non-combat, combat, and LARPcraft style LARPs, which are a blend of both. There are some very key things that you want to do when you're starting a group. And there's a lot of key things you don't want to do when you're starting a group. First off, let's talk about some of the things that you want to do. And we're going to use the demonstrations in all of LARPcraft because, well, this is LARPcraft. So we will definitely use that rule set. First, you want to find a game set that, you know, that your group is comfortable with. You may only have one or two players. And, you know... There's lots of different books coming out. There's lots of different genres, if you will, of the games that we're creating through our unique tracking system. The Myths and Legends system, we'll use that as an example, is our uh, medieval fantasy style game. And that works very well for a lot of players. People understand the medieval concept. They also understand the fantasy concept fairly well. It's important, though, as you talk to your group, as you want to get started, and you may only have a few players, to really go through with it to see what type of game system you want. LARPcraft does have and is developing the Risen, which is a post-apocalyptic zombie-style LARP. We have a sci-fi LARP coming out, name not announced yet. We do have the Wild West LARP, which is a Western-themed LARP, uh, U.S. Western, like Wild Wild West style. And we may have some steampunk elements in that one as well. The actual steampunk LARP set by itself, uh, it is the Genesis system, which is kind of like steampunk meets Doctor Who. And then, of course, the Myth and Legends, so that is actually five rule sets we're going to be using. Each one of those will have its own unique tracking system, like the scrolls here on LARPcraft. And all the profiles, all the lore, all the history will be absolutely separate. So if you jump between the two systems, you'll have to have a new character for those systems because obviously they're different game sets. We are experimenting with, uh, I would like to give a shout out to Haloria right now. We actually have a role play version of the Myths and Legends realm at haloria.com, which basically just masks to the scrolls section for Haloria in the realm. And that is a good way to do forum based role play, Sephiroth and I and uh, Ronan and a few others have done a lot of research on how to do this. We've done quite a few play tests over the year uh, that we've been developing this. We tried to do it in Minecraft. We tried to do it in a few different ways, but we really decided that doing it in the forum is a, is a good way to practice. When you're starting your group, these are all valuable resources to use, even if you don't go in and use them to uh, start your group you actually are able to read the posts and see how people interact with each other. You can go into other people's profiles and see their lore, basically their public profile. On the back side of your profile, if you've played around with it, you actually have a journal now where you can keep track of your private notes. So if you're interacting with a lot of characters and you wrote it down in a game, you can you know keep track of that character. Or if you have multiple characters, it's a lot easier to keep track of. But the journal nobody else sees. That's your private recollection. That's your private notes for that character, which players were asking for. When you're starting a group, having a profile in Lovecraft for our system is essential. And getting your friends and family involved is probably some of the easiest and best ways to start a group. When we started the Wisconsin Live Action Role Players, it was uh, me and Odin um, and my brother, uh, which is Skylab on this system. And uh, Odin and I, if you haven't read this, we, uh, we had a few beers and we watched the movie Role Models a few years ago. I'm like, huh, that sounds kind of fun. We've been active online role players through uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, he did a lot of D&D. We had um, you know, a lot of event stuff that we were doing that was kind of like LARP, but it wasn't exactly like LARP. So... Um, we started from there, you know, over a case of beer, we made a website, and, you know, it, it, that's how it started with three people. 
So we started out with just two people, and then uh, Bucky Ganji came along, and we had three. And then we had Ronan coming on soon after that, so we had four, five, six, then ten, then twelve, then twenty, then it just progressed from there. So when you start a group, you actually start out very small. You only have a few people that you have involved. And getting involved in a system that's easy for them to understand is the most important part. LARPcraft is very easy to understand, but it has many complex features in its missing legend system. Some folks don't are not able to get a grasp on the fantasy part. Some people don't want to use the medieval part, and that's fine. What's most important is that you find a system that you can consistently play and have fun playing with. So um, those are some very key elements there. If you're gonna, you know, find a system that you can't play with, it's going to be um, you know, a losing battle because you're always going to struggle to get players if you if you yourself don't enjoy the game set you're using. If you're more of a contact sport person and you don't want to do a lot of the tracking and that kind of stuff, you know, maybe the contact sports other sites are what you want to do. Lovecraft game system is built though on a building block process. It's designed for teamwork. It's designed so that each part, every person in here has a specific strength and weakness. It has uh, many elements that is a growing and progression style system. So you start with nothing and you grow your, yourself and your character. You can also transfer characters in from other games and other LARPs. We encourage that, which we found from a difficulty level was, you know, it's a lot of reasons why a lot of folks don't go to other LARPs. They don't want to start from zero or the system is not system is not close enough to what they want or we're used to in other games. So we we, we try very hard to do that, and um, you know we're really starting to make a lot of progression now with a lot of different uh, with a lot of different players uh, coming on board. If you've noticed uh, the chat boxes underneath your profile on the main scrolls part. Uh, you know, it keeps a tally of how many players are, or how many member profiles we have, and that has really started to increase. Uh, even after we hit a thousand, you know, we've had a hundred since then, and that's only been a, I don't know, two weeks since we hit that, three weeks, something like that. So it's been uh, a very um, important part of what we're trying to do. Most new groups are always looking for places to. Uh, you know, host their first games. LARPcraft in its system knows that when you start out, you don't have a lot of, a lot of times you don't have a lot of money, you don't have any props or very few props, and you don't, you know, a lot of people, we don't expect you to know how to do a lot of event promotions. You're not, you know, unless you came from that kind of a background, nobody expects you to know how to do that stuff. And as we continue to, to develop LARPcraft, we're coming up with the tools to help new promoters, to help new groups decide how do you want to run your group and how to most efficiently do it so that you can do it right and keep growing and progressing. Because we want you to be involved in the community for years to come and grow it to, you know, some people want to use it as a business platform and they, some people can even try to do it as if the community supports it. They can actually run a group as a, a part-time or full-time business. So there's many different ways to do it. But then there's just, you know, the recreational club that wants to get together on the weekends and, you know, do some do some live action role play. So LARP is so unique in that it's one of the very few things that you can do in any structured form and have fun with it, whether it be the crafting, the battling, the questing, the writing, the lore, the interaction. I mean, it's just, you know, you get goosebumps thinking about all of the different parts of LARP. Because there is so many different things to do, and it's just it's super exciting. When a new group starts, that stuff is kind of hard to convey to new players sometimes. They don't get it. They don't understand it. And a lot of times you don't see it. If you go on YouTube and you search LARP videos, a lot of the stuff that's portrayed is not quite positive. Uh, you know, it looks very, uh, well, not good. And... A new player coming in can be discouraged by those types of uh, informal videos or, you know, things that, again, LARPcraft is trying to raise the bar when it comes to doing it in a certain way 
that attracts new players because we we know that a lot of gamers like to do it. We know that a lot of sports and athlete uh, athletic types like to do it. And if you have a right the right kind of platform, you can get a lot more people, which the Lovecraft system seems to be doing quite well at right now. Making sure that a group has enough activities is another big uh, stepping stone. We see a lot of groups wanting to start up and then they fizzle out because they don't know where to get started. And we understand that that's a, a, something that's very frustrating. And it can be hard to find the right information of, you know, there's how to LARP and then there's how to host LARP games. And we have come up with a lot of the criteria for making a curriculum on how to host games and other activities that you can do to keep growing your group proactively as you, you know, as possible. So those tools and techniques are coming out as we are developing them. And even LARPcraft doesn't have it all figured out, but, you know, and every group is going to be different. Every region is going to be different. You know, all land managers are different. All the, di you know, just there's so many things that are variables. We're just trying to come up with the simple criteria to help you get started. Much like this LARPcast, which is here to, you know, give you some ideas, get the ball rolling, get the gears turning, and, and you know, get you going. But when you're starting out, you got to take that first step. And the how to get started guide that we've already created shows you how to set up your group, how to set up your social media platforms so that they do it you do it correctly. Uh, we give you examples, we let you use our pictures, we you know, we try to provide as many tools as we can to help you get started. And you'll notice it's kind of funny because we don't have a lot of pictures up there. So a lot of our LARP craft groups are all using the same pictures, and it all looks like we're all one big group. And while we are a big family, we are a big group, you know, now we're starting to see some of the groups change into their own pictures and, and grow it in their, the way they feel comfortable. So getting a few players started, getting them on the LARP craft system, you know, having them ask questions, getting to understand how to use your profile, and doing those types of things is really the first step. The next step is hosting some type of formal event. Most people think, well, I got to do an outpost event or a realm event or, you know, I got to do this big thing and I have to have all these props and all this stuff. That's not right. You don't have to do any of that stuff. We designed the battlegrounds. If you look in the rulebook and you see the definition of battleground, you can actually do a battleground with two people. You don't even need an elder. It doesn't have to be in an approved location. And you can just simply submit a backyard activity event between you and your friends. We know that groups start with just a few people, and we want you to grow from there. So that's why the Battleground event, you can actually submit your XP and, and your stuff right through the Live Action Products website by just simply saying, where was the game? What, what did you do? You know, how much XP did you get? There's a 300 XP max because you, know, you can do it once a week. So, I mean, you can do a few practices and crafting sessions, and before you know it, you got a couple thousand XP just from that. So it's a great way to start building, and it's a great way to start doing things. If you have a, let's just say you set up your Facebook, you set up your Google Plus and your Twitter and all that, and you don't have any events, you look like a dormant or inactive group. So without any activity, your group, again, can be destined to fail. You don't have to be doing them every week, but maybe once or twice a month to get started is a good step to go with. We also help groups get started by you know, spreading the word of mouth advertising. Maybe make a flyer or something, you know, Word or Google Docs or anything. You know, there's a lot of free programs. You can make a very simplistic one. Uh, we have some templates for you if you want to use those. Uh, they're buried in the forums here a little bit, and we can dig them up as we need them. And as we progress as LARPcraft, we have already offered through numerous grants, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars in free marketing material, free trifolds, business cards. We've been trying to do as much as we can to allow groups to have these resources because you hand out a flyer, you have a, hand out something that looks really cool. People want to do, whether it's in a game store or, you know, bookstore or theater groups or, you know, there's just a ton of places you can put these things. It's a community gathering. It's a community event. And people dig that. They really like doing stuff as a community. And everything you see in LARPcraft, you know, as it pertains to sex, religion, all the stuff that would make a community shun a group like this, we've made it very family-oriented and proactive. 
So a community risk management manager might go in there and say, well, you know, if they're doing all this crazy worshiping Satan kind of stuff and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, they may, they'll have a stereotype that they're thinking of. They have to think of it in the worst situation possible. Most community leaders do. That's how they're trained. We have to break that, that what they're thinking and actually show them, look, this, this is done right. This is, you know, if we, we have waivers, we have insurance if we need it, we have, you know, we have the resources and the tools to do this right and show the community that we're, that we can do this and that, you know, once you get it past them, the word of mouth advertising then seems to blossom. Once the community sees that you're really doing this, you know, and it's a fun, great activity for everybody, it seems like at that moment, your word of mouth advertising goes beyond your control. It, people start showing up that you are outside your networks now and joining your Facebooks and your Twitters and your, your Googles and your YouTubes that you don't have control over. And that's what we want. We want to get it past your network and, and uh, it really takes on a life of its own. When you're starting groups, use the resources on LARP craft. Use the scroll because there are so many examples of things already out there. And I apologize because the scrolls, they're, you know, they're a glorified forum. So some of the stuff is hard to dig through. We sticky some of the stuff, which if you're using the phone apps and stuff, sometimes they don't show up real well if you don't know how to use the tabs. But a lot of times if you just go to the search feature on the LARPcraft scrolls, that search feature is very powerful. If you put in specific words, if those words are in that post, they usually come up. And the search is pretty darn accurate and can help you out a lot. Again, utilizing the team speak, utilizing a lot of the stuff we're trying to do and set up from the video aspect of how to pick realms, how to, you know, you know, uh, make uh, equipment. You know, a lot of the early videos we did were not very good. I mean, we were doing them on camera phones, and they're two, three, four years old. And I bet, you know, it has to start somewhere. We just wanted to make it very clear that when we do these types of videos, that they're informal, but informative. So not just showing, hey, here's some people hitting people and doing some goofy stuff in the woods. No, it's we got to explain it because watching it or listening to it, a lot of times you don't understand what it is that you're looking at. And again, that can be a negatively perceived thing for people who have never done it before. But if you show them things in the right, right, the right light and show them how you're actually doing it, boom, you might get two or three extra people coming to your next event because you showed that video or shared the LARPcraft video or did something on one of your social media networks. And again, your friends, your family are your biggest resources at this, at this very critical starting stage. Um, you know, if you need a couple extra bucks to create some loaner weapons or make some garb or buy some stuff, uh, we've seen a lot of family support for that type of thing. So, uh, I know a lot of families will, you know, join together and band together to make that, uh, financial commitment a little easier on the new starting group. I've seen it where a few of the groups went right out right away and went to like their, you know, Joe's auto body and you know Becky's coffee shops and that kind of stuff and said hey look I'll put you on our site and we'll advertise for you if you give us a couple couple bucks or you know donate some clothing or you know something from the embroidery shops and that kind of stuff you can do those types of sponsorships very informal as long as you have the right structure set up and you can utilize the you know Lordcraft rule book and the waivers and all that stuff to show that you are a very credible system that you know you're really trying to do this the right way and you can get a lot, you know, a couple hundred bucks right off the bat just from doing that kind of stuff, which will be enough to grow your first crafting sessions where you can make some weapons and that kind of stuff. A lot of us, however, don't do a lot of that sales stuff and don't know how to do the marketing stuff. So what we end up doing is we just self-fund it. And, you know, it's just like any other hobby. It takes, it takes dollars and it takes time. But unlike any other hobby where you're maybe plunking away on, you know, for endless hours, grinding on a uh, video game, this LARP actually teaches you something. It actually teaches you how to work in a team. It teaches you how to do communication. It teaches you, and you may not realize it's teaching you because you're having fun, but it's teaching you how to do skill crafting. It's teaching you 
you know, you actually start looking into, like for the medieval side, you start looking into medieval history. You start wanting to do it because now you're proactively using these things in a game setting. And a lot of people, have even I've seen a lot of the players actually go in and start doing formal martial art training, weapons trainings, and that kind of thing because they want to be better. And there are those resources available. And YouTube is a fantastic, it has so much stuff when it comes to those types of trainings and medieval stuff and, you know, accents working on character creations. A lot of theater groups have really nice, uh, you know, things on that nature. So uh, utilize those, utilize those for sure. Um, yeah, so, I mean, those are those are some very, very simple basics. The events that you do, don't take off more than you can chew. And make sure that you have enough people in your group that can be designated for certain tasks. So, you know, like, I'm not real strong in sewing, but I'm pretty good on an anvil. Um, you know, Odin's really good at sewing, and he's good at story creation. Ronan's good at story creation and questing and... You know, in our th group of three or four, and you know, as we grow, and Bucky and and Zuka and some of the others that are in our elder group here, you know, we all are good at certain things, and we enjoy doing certain things. And talking about it in a group about what you enjoy doing will help as a group become you know a stronger unit because you actually can work together and play on your strengths and you know stay away from your weaknesses, things you may not enjoy if you're if you're doing a lot of volunteer work. So, uh, you know, don't burn out your volunteers. Don't expect too much from people. And you're not going to get it right the first time. You know, simply put, you're there to experience it and learn it. And very few people will get it right the first time. So don't expect it to be a glorious event for a crafting or a battle session. When all it really is is, you know, just keep it relaxed. Keep it fun. And just, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, we just started. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, that this Lovecraft rule set is, you know, it's got a lot of things to it, and it's going to take some time to learn it all, and that's okay. You can say that, and uh, and and you know, don't don't over glorify something and under deliver, you know. So uh, just go out there and have fun and do it, and you know, a couple battle sessions, a couple practice sessions, you know, going through each chapter. A lot of groups will do that. They'll go. They'll make a crafting session or a battlegrounds event, and then they'll actually go ahead and, um, you know, go through a certain part of the rule book or say or like quiz each other on different parts, and it kind of makes everybody interactive and teach everybody else on how the system works. Again, Lovecraft is a building block process, so there's a lot of skills and sets that you need something else in order to get there. The leveling system is in place for that very, very you know, same reason where you can't just take a level zero character and learn Horn of Doom. You know, there's things that you have to build on. And that's like any other game set for most uh, RPGs is that, you know, it's in that formula. It's in that, in that set. Um, when you're looking for a location to do these types of things, if you're going to start advertising outside your immediate friends and family, I strongly suggest using an area that is a public area. I do not recommend bringing new strangers to your house because that's just, use common sense, people. That is a risk. You don't know who these people are. So your friends and family, of course, you know, they all know each other and whatever. So having them in your personal domains is, is great. But when you start advertising outside, use public areas. You know, uh, make sure that when you're, picking out an area, and it can just be a simple park. You know, some of the basic things at a LARP event that are awesome are parking, to make sure that everybody can park where they need to park. You know, when you first start out, you only need, you only have maybe six cars or five cars or two cars. But there's been times at some events where, you know, we expected 20 and we had 50. And then so now our car count went from, you know, 12 to 22. So Making sure that logistically you have an area big enough to accommodate the parking can be can be one issue. The next one, people forget to go to the bathroom before they come to LARP for some reason. I, and then, you know, all the excitement and getting all your gear ready and all that kind of stuff. 
having a location that has some kind of relief facilities is a, a big bonus. And a lot of public areas have that. In winter, those can be closed. Uh, if they're closed for construction or something else, you want to go to that location before the event to make sure that those needs are met. A lot of the wilderness groups that we do, uh, and when I say wilderness, I mean we try to find remote locations. They don't have porta potties. They don't have, uh, you know, toilets, flushing water, you know, water, running water, flushing toilets, that kind of stuff. Some of the groups, as they get bigger, what they'll start to do is they'll go to, you know, like a Cabela's or a Gander Mountain or a Bass Pro Shop, and they'll buy the privacy shelter. And you know, a lot of groups will just get their own personal privy, if you will, and and uh, have it in their game area. And that that is a big resource. Um, and from a promotional game point, game standpoint, those very little things like that uh, can push you above any other group. So if you have a group that you're competing against, these little basic tidbits of promotion, like having the right parking, having bathrooms, making sure that, you know, maybe bring some waters or make sure that people understand, you know, hey, we're going to be out here. It could be 90 degrees. We're in costume. We're running around. Hey, guess what? You got to keep hydrating because you're going to sweat. It's going to happen. Bug juice, you know, food, that kind of stuff. Those are all little things that, that you can do. And we do post on the LARPCraft site all of those things that you want to bring. It's actually even in the rule book, some of those things. So uh, copy and paste them. You know, use them. That's, that's what they're there for, for that kind of stuff. Having the right management team is crucial. When you're starting a group, if, you got, if, if your group is led by a negative Nancy, guess what? It's not going to be fun no matter what you do. If you don't have the right promoter, hosting the group that's really tough to grow a group when the first when the people that are running the group are very negative you know if they're not friendly if they're not outgoing or if they're just weird like they don't communicate well with others those are some of the things that maybe leadership isn't the right role for those types of people maybe you have to start out that way i understand but your 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 front lines your your front runners you know, the ones who are comfortable talking and can kind of relate to people, put your talkers in the lead positions for that kind of stuff if you feel comfortable doing so. Knowing what people's strengths and weaknesses are, are, you know, a good way to get your group started the right way. Again, you don't have to know any of this stuff. You just kind of grow with it as, as you go. Realm locations, game locations. So we got battlegrounds, we got outposts, and we got realms. Starting with a battleground is probably the most awesome way to do it. Once you have 3, 5, 10, 12 people, you have, you know, the dedication, so you, you, you've done a game or two, or you've done a practice or two or three. People are coming back. They're enjoying it. You're having fun. You know, you feel comfortable doing it. Your core network of people are comfortable doing it. Then I suggest go ahead and pay the whatever fee it is and start yourself a colony. This has recently changed in LARPcraft where all groups are now just called colonies. They're your event promoter. A colony is going to get a protected area. The protected area depends on what types and how frequent of games they have, as well as how big of an area they're in. So you may have a, uh, you know, if you're in an area and you don't have a lot of props, you don't, you know, you're just starting out, you may start out with a very small territory of your, for your colony. And that's fine. Once you get bigger and you start branching out and you host games, you can host games outside of your colony. You just can't host games inside somebody else's colony or territory. So as you grow, you can request your, your, you know, your territory to expand. A lot of that has to do with resources as well. And it doesn't have to be financial. It just has to be what have you got a passion for in this game to grow that. If you start a colony and you're like, well, I want half the state, well, that's not going to happen. If you take a look at on the LARPCraft map in the scrolls, you'll notice in Wisconsin especially, we have recently broken apart the Inland Waters Colony because it covered the whole state. Well, that's too many areas. In Wisconsin, it's too big. So we broke it down into smaller areas because each one of us were different promoters and 
it seems to work pretty well that way. We all work under the Wildart banner. So Wisconsin Live Action Role Players, that, that represents the entire colonies of, of uh, LARPcraft for, for Wisconsin. But each colony has its own name, and every colony is going to run things a little different. You're going to have different management. You're going to have different lore writing skills. You're going to have different quests. You know, it's going to be a different flavor. So we wanted to identify that flavor by giving it a different name. Begin with the battlegrounds, the outposts, and the realms. Those names are that way so that you know, hey, I'm going to go to a battleground today. All right. You can kind of know what to expect because it's the name is called a battleground. Outpost, you know those are a little bit bigger. You can get more XP for them. You know that just because of the name is outpost. Realms, you know that might be an overnight event, that kind of thing. And then we added the immersion levels. Light immersion, hey, jeans, maybe that's okay. Medium immersion, you're probably going to be want to be in costume. Your boffers might still be okay. Your latex and your your foam, you know, your forged foam weapons are going to be better. They're they're concentrating more on you know medium immersion is really pushing towards getting that immersion down, and that's going to require better props, you know, more garb, that kind of stuff. And everybody kind of progresses through this. Traditional immersion then is you know your jeans and stuff are definitely not allowed. Your foam buffer might have to be covered. Um, you can't be duct taped. You know that kind of stuff. Your your props are better, and typically those games are, you know, they're they're the highest type of game. So if I say I'm going to a light immersion battleground event, I can say light immersion battleground, and you guys know exactly what what type of clothing is usually allowed, what type of weapons are going to be allowed. Same thing if I go, you know, it's a medium immersion. Outpost. Again, just by saying those two words, well, I can't count because that's not just two words, but you get the idea. So we put those tools in place, and those are some of the things, the basics that your group's going to want to learn as they start. If you have questions about this type of thing, oh my goodness, ask. Ask your elders, ask your overlords, ask other colonies who are successful at this. Colonies who utilize each other to help grow games, to help build props, to help write quests, uh, you know, to help do management. What worked for you? What worked for you? When you become an elder, you get access to the elder section, and it has a, it's growing. It doesn't have a plethora, but I like, I just like using the word plethora. But the elder section is growing into where it's going to be a very huge resource for those game hosts. To on every topic about game hosting. You know who? You know if you had a bad apple in the in the realm, how did you handle that? If you had a you know if you had to deal with certain people and certain, how did you how did you do that? So you know definitely utilize that section. And um, the elder to become an elder is on live action products. The colony thing isn't on there yet. We're we're just revamping that a little bit, and um, you know it's it's there and it's available, and we continue to improve. Warcraft is always going to be evolving as the player's request changes to both the rule set and how the game is played. Warcraft is proactive that way. It's not just one dictator saying, <laughs> you play this way, this is how it's going to be. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's very interactive. And you see that with the voting threads, with player suggestions. We try to be, as again, as proactive as we can and increase the communication between everybody because together we win divided we don't win we fail so united we conquer divided we fail and I'm a big one even though some of you aren't religious and I know Bible stuff whatever but the biblical proverb of give a man a fish feed him for a day teach a man a fish feed him for a lifetime is kind of a backbone to the Lovecraft system we want to teach you how to do better have better games we want to teach you and have give you the resources to build what you want to build, you know, whether it's be crafting or you know games and that kind of thing. All of the resources are on Lordcraft, and almost everything is free. In fact, I think most of this stuff is free. And we we continue to keep it that way. So um, those are some very important things, some very valuable tools to, that you can utilize as a group, as a player, as a player wanting to build a group, and once again, Battleground. You can fill out the Battleground thing on LARPcraft uh, through the live action products. You can submit a game. 
a practice session, a crafting session, you know, for just two people, one or two people. And it's just, uh, you know, incredible that you can do that. If um, you have to get permission from landowners, here's, here's a real big thing when you start a group, jumping the gun with permission to use land. Uh, that I just to give you a little bit of history, I've been doing, I've been consulting with event promoters since the late 90s, and most of it is motorsport related, but a lot of it is club related too. And I found that with live action role play, it is strikingly similar uh, on how people do this the wrong way, as it is to the other businesses that I'm involved in. When you get a group together and you want to use a park and you got five people, it is not advised to ask for a permit. It's not advised to, uh, you know, start asking the city or the county or your land managers to use that property if it's public. What you're doing is no different than a group getting a group of, uh, you know, a group of friends together to play volleyball or have a picnic or just hang out. LARP is no different than any other activity, and if it is perceived as such, that's discriminatory towards your activity. So if you're allowed to have a picnic, if you're allowed to play volleyball, if you're, you know, whatever other thing you're allowed to do in a park, LARP is the same exact way. You know, it's the same exact type of activity. Now, if you're drinking and doing illegal stuff, well, obviously, it would be the same as if you were doing that with any other activity. You know, if it's not, if it's not legal, it doesn't matter what you're doing, it's still illegal. So use common sense on that kind of stuff. When your group gets to about the 20 to 30 people mark on an average basis, you're going to come across a, a different kind of attitude with the people using the facility, especially if it's a small park. If you have, if you are basically utilizing an entire area of the park that nobody else can no longer use because there's too many of you, that's when things are going to start changing. That's when land managers are going to get involved. That's when the city's going to get involved. That's when the county's going to get involved. When they're going to say, look, your activity is now hampering somebody else's chance to do the do their activity, that's usually the breaking point. That's when you've got to start doing permits and that kind of stuff. But usually by the time the group is that big and you're doing events and, you know, people are paying to do their, you know, to, to get into the event and that kind of stuff, you, you have some resources available to, to pay for those. So if you freak out about that kind of stuff or you're not charging anything to do, you know, like crafting sessions, that's fine. But if you start using locations and you're not charging and you have too many people, someone's going to have to float the bill get a permit to, you know, like if you're using a shelter and nobody else can use that shelter because there's way too many LARPers and that's just the way it is, which is good. That's a good problem to have. But just keep in mind that your land managers are going to are gonna have a problem with that because, you're again, the thing you want to remember and the thing you want to write down is if your LARP activity interferes or impedes on somebody else's enjoyment of the same facility doing their thing. So if you if you're limiting somebody else by doing it, then they're going to want you to, you know, reserve that area. And when people think, you know, to reserve an area, it's like millions of dollars. It's not. It's a lot of times it's, you know, no different than a graduation party or something. If you want to rent a shelter or whatever, you know, those are those are things you got to look for. But a new group starting out, if you got five or six people, asking permission to do something when it's a public area. Obviously, you want to get permission, and you know if this is. I'm talking more about public areas than private areas. Private areas, you have to ask permission if there's one person. That's because it's a private area and it's private property. Public areas is really what I'm getting trying to drive home with. It, you know, if you ask permission before it's time, and we've had this with a few, few, a few of our, uh, a few of our players who were just trying to do it right. You know, they, they, they saw the stuff on LARPcraft. They were trying to do it right. They were going to ask permission. Well, if you ask a land manager permission when you have five people, when you ask permission, they're thinking you have 500 people. Because 
land managers have to think in the worst risk management terms. So when you say, hey, I got a group of people and where you want to use this shelter, they're going to think there's a bunch of people who are violent and are going to break my stuff that have way too many people. They're going to come in with loud music and, you know, I mean, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to stereotype to the worst scenario because you didn't give them enough information and, you know, you, you jumped the gun. So I don't recommend doing that. Now, some areas I say I don't recommend and I use the may, I don't use must, you know, uh, the Star Wars, uh, you know, only Sith talk in absolutes. That's kind of a, uh, a, th a model we go by in that every area is a little bit different. I say may, not must. I say, you know, every situation, you may have to get a permit no matter what. Okay, well, that's that's your municipality's guidelines and laws. That's the way it has to be. But usually if that's, that's going to be the case, there's going to be signage at that location that says that. Uh, make sure it's a public area. <laughs> if you think it's a public area and it's not, uh, that's also happened to some of our groups where – you know, they, it's a public area that people have been going there for years. But amazingly, when 15 people show up in costume, the cops come. Well, it turns out those areas are not private. They're pub or not public. They're private. And just nobody was saying anything. But because live action role play will draw more attention than just the average person in street clothing, those are going to be things that you may find out accidentally. How do you know for sure? Call. You know, call the non-emergency numbers at your police department or your land manager, or your tourism department or whatever in your in your city or local local area. And just ask, hey, you know, me and three other people are wanting to uh, enjoy this activity, just enjoy this area. You don't even have to tell them what you're doing. You know, we just see people going in there. Is, is that a public area or is that a private area? You know, and they'll answer you correctly. But again, if you say, well, I'm bringing in 50 people or I want to have 50 people. You, yes, you may want to have 50 people, but you have five people. You know, it's how you word things to those types of land managers. So I'm a little bit going into this a little bit more than I have to. But what I'm just trying to drive home the fact of starting a group, three to five people or whatever, you know, just go out there and have fun. If you're going to have people come into you, uh, you know, that you don't know that you're advertising, and that can be done because social networking and Facebook allows that kind of stuff to happen. So it may be better. It's secure. It's more. It's safer if you are at a public area where there's other people around. If you are under 18, I recommend having at least one adult around, especially when you get started. Again, uh, those are the types of things that that uh, you know. Unfortunately, we live in a society where you you don't know who you can trust and who you can't. So having an adult on site is recommended. It's not required, so like you and your buddy can do a backyard event without an elder, and that's why it's written that way, so you can still do it. You will not get any experience points, however, if you do not sign the online waiver. So if you submit a backyard event and you don't have an online waiver signed, because, I mean, that's free, just do it on LARPath, you won't get the XP. I got, I got to make sure that you know, our bases are covered as much as possible. All right, so... You've listened to my constant rambling for, gosh, 45, 50 minutes now. Congratulations. Well done. We are going to do our first lottery of 100 XP. What I want you to do is change your nickname. Change your nickname to the order you are in the tavern talk. So I am going to be one because I'm at the top. All right. Ronan, you're number two, so you'd put two. Sephiroth, you're number three, so you'd put three. You're going to be assigned a number this way. When you change it, and when you put your number in, that means I know you're listening, I'm going to go on random.org. And on random.org, I am going to select the num you know, any of these numbers, and whoever gets it is going to win. So I'll wait. I'll give you guys a little bit of time there. And you can see how I do it. If you go to random.org, you can do a true random generator using their algorithms. A lot of lotteries use random.org because of their – it's like the best algorithm for random picks. Okay, Rogue, you're 12. Why are you in 3? Oh, now you're in 11. Okay, maybe put it behind your name. 
Uh, I get it. Okay. My apologies. Put your uh, put your number behind your name so that way you don't change your position. <laughs> and I changed my position. Well, I tried, folks. I tried. It should switch it back if you uh, if you put it behind. See all things we learn. This is just a spontaneous event. So put your number behind your name instead of in front of it. And then it should bring us back to where we need it to be. <laughs> yes, this is weird. I do apologize. It's funny watching everybody switch around, though. So count down how many spaces you are and put that number behind your name. For those of you listening to this podcast and have no idea what we're talking about, on TeamSpeak, if you go to the TeamSpeak channel, and you're wearing an alert cast. There's 15, about 15 people in here. And for listening live, you get XP just for listening. We also do random giveaways of XP during the broadcast. So you put your number, or there's going to be games in the Tavern Talk at certain points where you get to earn XP or gold or silver or copper or you know those types of things. So it's, it's kind of working, kind of. And unfortunately, even as the admin, I can't change your name for you. So put your number behind your name, and it will work. Regardless, I can count. And so, one, two, three. so we have 12 people. Is that 12? 12? People keep switching stuff around. I'm just going to say it's 12. Okay. So... Number, 1 through 12. Everybody got a number, right? Everybody have a number? I guess it really doesn't matter as long as each one of us doesn't have the same number. Everybody's got a different number. Okay, 1 through 12. And I'm going to generate a random number on random.org. 7. Bucky wins the first, first round. And for some reason, I think somebody might just kill him. Can you kill somebody on TeamSpeak? No. Ah, no. There's no life bans here. Ha ha ha. We'll do it again, don't worry. Okay, next up on the list, and we're almost done. I do apologize. We try to keep these to an hour if we can. We're a little bit over because this is the first one and all the contests and stuff. And we will be giving away actual free product once these things get bigger. So if we have 50 or 30 or even 20, We'll be actually giving away product worth actual dollars, not just XP and coin, as we get the sponsors for it. And live action products is going to be one because I said so. But um, when you're starting your group and you have your social media channel set up, when you set up a battleground or when you set up your colony, uh, you can go ahead, even if you haven't officially announced your colony yet, you can call yourself the colony of you know whatever it is. Uh, that's a LARP group, and you're going to want to put LARP group or LARP something in the title of the name of the page or whatever it is. With social media, a lot of times they're search engine friendly words and names. If you put LARP right in the name of your group, you'll come up. If somebody searches LARP in your area on one of your platforms, that's something that will definitely be done. It'll happen. It'll work. Uh, if you have a question about anything, refer back to our manuals on how to set things up, and we'll continually upgrade those, and ask us some questions. So if you have a question about something, throw it in the shout box. It's better to put it in the scroll so others can see it, because in the shout box things get buried, and um, you know we, we want to do it that way. So um, try to put it in the right area, and we're constantly... And I do apologize to some people who are used to the scrolls being in one way. We're, we're big enough now to where I have to subcategorize some of the things just to keep the main page of LARPcraft from taking 12 years to load. And there's all these different menu items, and it just it's overwhelming to the new person. So the main page is going to be, you know, there's not going to be as many things. But when you click into something, there may be a whole other submenu of things. So we'll progress, and we'll try to keep it as clean as possible. And if you have any suggestions about that, if you're like a whiz on the forum stuff, and on menu stuff, you know, post your thoughts. You know, we're, again, a proactive group. 
we're not going to pretend to know it all and it's a community involved group so uh, we value your expertise if you are an expert in that field making people sign the waivers and that kind of stuff again very simple those are all free online resources if a land manager requires you to have insurance there are insurance companies out there that handle just live action role play LARPcraft in its own has its own policy that you can become part of if you're part of LARPcraft, um, which may be an alternative to you. And our limits on LARPcraft are much higher than a normal group, simply because we can do it in United States, Canada, Mexico, territories, that kind of thing. But it's not required. And that's why to become a colony, it's very, very inexpensive because it doesn't include our insurance coverage for the group itself. You typically only need that when the landowner requests it. Uh, the waiver is a good thing to have. And we also have a new product coming out for the legal shield. So you actually have legal coverage as well. Those are all things that I try not to preach too much about because it can get kind of boring. But those are some of the things you really need. And from a LARP perspective, there are some lands that you can't get without those tools. So we put them in place and we paid for them because we know that you're going to need them in some locations. So if you need to be part of that, private message me. I can, I can tell you how to do that stuff and get you involved and either set you up with your own policy stuff or, you know, whatever. And I know that stuff because I am a licensed insurance agent for commercial property. So, um, that's pretty much answered that question. Um, so, let's see. I'm looking through the notes here. And again, this is going to be available on YouTube and LARPcast.com, LARPcast which is our blog. And we're trying to actually change that into, uh, if we do a full TV series, we actually have LARPcraft.tv. And if we do a lot of videos, uh, that's it's just going to be LARPcraft.tv, and you'll see a plethora of all videos. Mostly will be in uh, YouTube. Uh, social media. Oh, and, and on the YouTube thing, a lot of people don't realize YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, owned by Google, which is the largest search engine in the world. Reserving your colony name, your Gmail address, and that kind of stuff, you want to do that. You know, once you come up with a colony name, uh, it's really hard to change those, though, though so you, you know, really try to pick a name you, you think you're going to like for a while. You can always change it or create a new one later on, but um, changing the actual name once you have it is, is a lot harder. Um, but getting your YouTube channel reserved, you don't have to put anything on it right away. And you can share, you can use our channel ones from our LARPcraft, and you can share it on your LARPcraft channel for your colony. Uh, so a lot of times it'll be the colony of LARP, or LARPcraft chapter, or, you know, you can, you can put the word LARPcraft in there if you want, you can put just LARP in there, you know, whatever. Again, we have those guides on, on the scrolls for your, uh, as a resource for you. And I can't stress this enough, when you're, when you're starting out, you know, start small. You're not going to know this stuff right away. Don't pretend to be an expert if you're not. Utilize the resources of LARPcraft, the elders and the overlords. And not all the overlords, not all the elders have it, have it all right, and a lot of them are just starting. But they can share with you what they have already learned. So you can be you know, five steps ahead of, of where you would have been if you started without that resource. And we are a friendly, proactive community. You may have realized on the scrolls, there's not a lot of negative scrolls. We delete negative scrolls on that for that reason. We don't want a lot of negative, you know, things that are negative tend to just spawn more neg negativity. And before you know it, you got a forum full of stuff you don't even want to look at anymore because the, the, the user group just turns sour. And we've seen that wreck LARP groups. We've seen that kind of thing uh, that destroy a group. Destroy large organizations. And when we were, you know, when we were starting LARPcraft ourselves, we looked at all the groups that failed and why they failed. We did case studies. Well, I did case studies. I don't know if Odin or Ronan did, but I know that I wanted to see why did these other organizations fail? Because they were good organizations. They had good rule books. They had good, you know, good people. Why did they fail? And you know, there's multiple reasons, and we try to identify those reasons to you know, put them out there so that our groups that are starting out and your groups that are starting out won't fail. You know, you can use those as examples. 
And a lot of the negative examples on LARP, uh, LARPcraft, we leave a lot of the neg like the, the bad examples, not negative, I'm sorry, but the bad examples. If we screwed up on something in a game, we use those as a resource. And we try to use it as a proactive resource, not a pointing fingers blame resource, but something that we can keep on there so others can learn from it. And we do have quite a few of those up there because, you know, well, we're all new at starting games in some way, shape, or form, but we're doing stuff that we've never done before. So if you tried something and you didn't like it or you did like it, you can post it on the scrolls and, again, help others learn how to do it right as well. When you're getting your group started, having a rule book handy, um, we, again, we try to do everything on digital. We, we're trying to put together the, the, the videos, the video rule book guides, uh, the how to start LARP guides. You'll see Ronan, bless his heart. I make him go in front of the camera all the time because I just... His voice is great, and uh, I pick on him all the time, but he is such a great, great sport about it, and he's, he's, you know, darn good on camera, but we try to put together a good resource for you to use in video format, because we know that reading this stuff, if you don't have a paper version of something, reading it on a phone or on a tablet or some of these, you know, computers, like netbooks and stuff it's hard to read them and people just want to it's easier to explain it in a video so that's what we're trying to do so like the magic examples and how to hold your shield and how to do your head counts and that kind of stuff those videos are coming so we can give you good examples of what an incantation is what the heck does the word incantation mean I mean we will take it step by step to show you how this game is played another new and exciting adventure that if you want to take this to the tabletop Seal Wolf and I, and I think a few others, are also experimenting. We have a formula on how to change your LARPcraft character into a tabletop version of LARPcraft Miss and Legend system. It's in the works. I'm not saying how it's going to work because it's still being tested. And if I told you now, it'll probably all be different by the time we release it. So, but it's it's coming, and we want to base it so that whether you're in a game, you're on Haloria doing it on forums, or you're sitting down with some buds and you know, doing it on a tabletop version, you can do it. So, very exciting stuff. Uh, what we value is the community. So, pretty cool. Yes, as Ronan said. And as we introduced, like, Caloria, you know, Sephiroth did a really great job of putting together, we took some basic rules, we took, uh, uh, I apologize, I can't remember her name, she was on here, she put together a really nice set of of, you know, she spat out some, some basic rules, we role-played them, we tested them on Valoria, Sephiroth then took it in the yellow section, we had some comments, we did some additional testing, then he posted the draft that's out there now on Valoria in the, in the scrolls about how to do that, and some of the stuff we did in the test is amazing, it's fun to learn, it's fun to look at. In the uh, epic member only section, you'll also see that there's a story in the third person. So it's like writing a book, but together collectively as people. And some of the stories are starting to be kind of funny. And some of the test ones we did were, were you know, people actually used them in their lore. And then they brought those from Haloria and what we're building in our stories. And when they're bringing it, they're bringing those stories into the realms. So it's a good way to connect the virtual world and the actual LARP world that you're physically playing in. And we, we, we do that on purpose. We are shunned by some of the LARPs because we allow the forums to be used as lore building exercises to grow characters between games. Because, you know, games are far and few apart a lot of times. And, you you know, you're excited. You want to keep doing it and writing. And we got a lot of fantastic writers uh, in LARPcraft. And a lot of you guys who are and gals that are doing the writing, man, you guys are really getting good at it. And uh, we, we applaud you all because they it is it's, some of the stories are fantastic sure sometimes it you know doesn't fit the lore right but we're coming up with the approval process so we can put it in you know the official lore and then there's unofficial lore and colonies can have their own lore and that kind of stuff so i mean uh, it's it's a you can use those to draw your character stories up and uh, it's it's very unique so any questions on that just let us know that's all the time we have for this LARP cast. 
And I'm going to end the recording, but we're going to do a question and answer session afterward, and we're going to do another raffle for some uh, some prizes. Here, I'm going to unmute some people, and um, you know, but we're going to end the recording now. So if you want to be part of the next LARPcast, come on to uh, um, LARPcraft.com, LARPcast.com, or uh, you know, keep involved with LARPcraft on Twitter, Facebook, or Google Plus. And we will post when we're going to be doing the next one. We're going to try to do these more often, at least a couple times a month. And whether it be introduce new characters, you know, how to build your character, how to build lore, you know, get together with the real strong writers of the group and, you know, just help you build games, help you build characters and keep it fun. So join us next time. We will see you in the games.